So we are now headed into our next segment. Of course, it's 7 p.m. And it's a pleasure to have you guys on board with us on the program. You're truly Sunny Blink here, Thomas, Joshua C. Mongol, Derek Chong, and Otto, and Otto Carrington. What we'd like to do now would be uh, welcome to our set. We have Lavonne Flynn representing Jamaica. We have Junior Kelly also representing Jamaica. Of course, we're going we're gonna to have a... A little convo with, 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 with Junior Kelly because I just got some information and learned some things about my artists, if you want to put it that way. I didn't realize and I really have a couple of questions I would like to, to toss out and get some feedback on. And Lavonne Flynn, a gentleman who is now in a different capacity representing in Jamaica. Let's get some of that conversation going. Otto Carrington, lead the way. It's a pleasure to have you, Junior and, and Lavonne. Um, Lavon, a, a question that you know we would like to put to you this this afternoon is that you know Jamaica, you are you are one of the first chairman of the Jamaica Cannabis Licensing Authority, and I know you no longer hold that position. But do you think that uh, enough was done in in regards and and what sort of strides you would have made? Because I know now you are now shifting into your original position where you're an advocate for medical cannabis. You have, to, you have to unmute, um, Levon. I think your, your your mic is still unmuted. Sorry about that. That's all right. Welcome to the program again. Yeah, rookie, yeah, rookie mistake. <laughs> That's all right. Talk to us. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Big up, Zach. Big up, Junior Kelly. Um, you know, during, during my tenure as chairman of the Cannabis Licensing Authority of Jamaica, you know, I had a consistent theme is that we have to grow the industry. If we're not focused on growing the industry and just instead just regulating it, that's not going to set us on the path to success. You know, regulation does not lead to growth. So over that time, it was, it was the number one job was really seeding that message and getting persons to understand that. Um, so... And over time, I've also realized that what perhaps is needed uh, for the government is a separate entity that's focused on growing the industry. You know, perhaps that, that should not be the role of the regulator. So, okay, we've now established, we've done the fundamental work of establishing the laws and setting up the regulation. The next natural step needs to be what is the growth strategy and what is the unit, what's the body that's going to drive that growth. And that's one of the things I've been communicating. And in the 420 series I did a couple of weeks ago, that was the essence essence of it, uh, the video series that I did, is that we need to put things in place to, 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 to drive the industry. And here are some suggestions. So you are, uh, good evening and welcome back to the program. Sunny Bling here and I'm going to toss in Kia Thomas Cray pretty quickly as well. But my question is that you, uh, you have gone from regulator to advocate. And I don't know if I heard you correctly, but from what you're saying is that you have learned certain mistakes you believe that would have been made from reg- from being a regulator. Because I'm seeing Zach shaking his head a whole lot when he heard about the external bodies being involved in these things. So is it that you would have learned what you're saying here now after being in the seat that you held before? No, it's it's a belief I always had that that, that needs to be the, the, the next step. Um, but just in my capacity as chairman, you know, I can't, I can't bring that into action. That's a all of government approach that's right. needed towards that. Um, so it's not a matter of learning it; is 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 realizing having that as part of the original vision that this is where we need to go, and then finding ways of how we can see that message because it's a it's it's a it's a ideological change you're trying to implement within a government system that is not always welcome into to different ways of thinking yeah so it takes it, it's, it's a lot of work yeah. to, to, to to explain to persons to build the narrative to show the opportunities um so a lot of my work um i believe during my time as chairman was 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 around that and i'll continue even in my advocacy whichever way i do so i'll continue to to drive that message home now because there's so many opportunities for jamaica yeah. You know, I just think this is, this, is, this is something that's worth investing in. There are so many opportunities for Jamaica on so many levels. Mm. In the video series that I, I, spoke, I spoke about the potential of the nutraceutical sector and having incubators within the island to, to, to drive that sector. I also talk, spoke about the possibilities of wellness tourism, which to me, if, 
it's 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 a natural fit for Jamaica because we already have a strong tourism product. The opportunities are there. I just want to see us invest in it because it's worth investing in. And of course, we're also going to be sharing that series on our Heights platforms as well. So to our listeners, you're going to make sure and look out for that. And we are going to toss are going to toss over to Kia Thomas and as well as we are going to introduce Juno Kelly. But before that, we really wanted to hear from Zach because I saw Zach really nodding in approval to some of the things that you were saying earlier on there. So, Zach, pretty quickly, what do you have to say to some of the things you just heard there? Well, I, I just like the perspective. It puts the product first in the center, and then it has all the other stakeholders equally vested in producing or consuming a, or regulating a perfect product that we can stand proud of, you know? We don't do that very often here in the Caribbean. I think you guys do a better job in Jamaica, specifically with your entertainment product. And it goes to my perspective when I had my shop previously, you know, I wanted to make sure everyone had access to a good quality product. Everybody could grow a good quality product. We all knew what a good quality product was. And, you know, how do we reinforce that and put that into our culture without straying away from typical island life, cannabis consumption in our daily lives and stuff like that. So, Levon, I'd love to work with you. Maybe we extend a unit out here in in Antigua, too. Mm -hmm. Caribbean wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, man. We're networking well. Kia Thomas, come on in. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zach. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Flynn. So we want to welcome and bring in um, the none, none other than uh, Junior Kelly. And um, certainly we want to ask Junior, what, what are your thoughts on the uh, Jamaican cannabis industry right now from the perspective as a reggae artist and also from the perspective of an, of an advocate for the, uh, for the drug? What are your thoughts um, for the cannabis industry in Jamaica, on the cannabis industry in Jamaica? First, thanks, uh, thanks for having me on the program. Mr. Flynn, Zach, Slam, 100.5 FM. It's good to be here, brother. Really? And all the people are tuning in from over in Trinidad. Greetings to you all. Okay. Um, where that question is concerned, come again, please. Of course, not a problem. What are your thoughts on the Jamaican cannabis industry? Hmm. Well, you use a term drug, and I hate that term medicine. I love the term medicine. But anyway, we get go that for a second. No, Judah, I, I, I was actually here saying the same thing like it's <laughs> medicine, <laughs> medicine. I know this is the yeah. part of the you know, so I forget. Yeah. And we, um, actually, we appreciate the understanding and not taking it too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. okay. Um, um, because one thing, the cannabis, um, the legalization, uh, the decriminalization in Jamaica, it's, it's sometimes I think it's a little bit too much, too little, too late. Um, we should have capitalized on it ages ago. Trust me, I think, no, I am sure we would have got rid of all our, our debts, you know, in Jamaica, we don't clear up all our debts because, I mean, we're a third world country. And just like any other third world country, we're strapped with debts, you know? And um, that's one of the ways. That's the green goal. That would have set us free and set us on a good footing. That could have bring in a lot of revenue for the country, you know, infrastructure work and all of that, you know what I mean? Um, so I think... It's a little too late, but we, 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 we're gaining traction and we're heading in the right direction. I mean, Mr. Flint would know more about that where the legislation is concerned. Um, but I think it is positive. I think it's positive. Yeah, Mr. Kelly, um, if I do my, you don't mind me calling him Mr. Kelly instead of Junior Kelly. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Um, but basically, the, 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 the Rastafari movement and more especially reggae artists within Jamaica have been promoting the herb for since reggae music essentially had, 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 was created many, many, many years ago and, you know, would have been advocating and promoting Jamaica. You know, are you disappointed that, it, I, I, I mean, or can you say whether, you know, any any of the companies that were set up in Jamaica partnered with the, with the Jamaican reggae artists in order to you know push the brands or, or, or you know to give in a, in a kind of give back give back way you know for all the promotion that that that, that the Jamaican artists would have done over the years. Well, um, I think we have as as reggae artists have been pushing and promoting and advocating for, for the legalization and the very least the decriminalization of it 
and sad to say the um the the, the growers um, and the, the and, and uh, the dispensary they are not they're not collaborating with us they're not reaching out to us as much as they should you know we were the ones who first start pushing it and promoting it the legalization of it through music and you know we, we haven't been contacted yet on a grand scale uh, only one artist so far i think and it's idonia you know as, as a jamaican artist a dancer artist not a reggae artist you know and reggae artists are the ones rastafari have been pushing it from god knows when from way back in the in the 50s the 60s the 70s through the 80s 90s and here we are now you know what i mean so i think more collaboration Mr. Flynn would agree with me on that. You know, we need more collaboration. Let's let's hear from Mr. Yeah. Flynn on our, what, what is being mentioned here. You want to come in and say anything here, Levon? Yeah, um, I know Jesse Royal is another artist who has, I believe, oh, yes. a partnership with, with Jakana. Um, yeah, and yes, Idonia, with, with, uh, Idonia with Epican. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think what I see a lot of the yeah. licensed producers in Jamaica doing they're finding their own creative ways to incorporate Rastafari in them identity as a ganja brand but that is essential and I believe they're, they're, they're genuine as well um, because they're, they recognize the, the history and the story of Rastafari in what Jamaica ganja is recognized as and, and valued as right now um, I, I, can't, I don't know how they would do that collectively I know some of them again. Some of them work with different growers. Growers um, work with different artists, but I'm not sure how they would do that collectively. Well, you know. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, you go and go on. Come on, join us. All right, um, it's a flame. You, you, right, we're on the right track, but there's more to be done in terms of promoting the music, promoting. Um, 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 cannabis within the music, reggae music. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's tons of artists here that need need it doesn't have to be me. It just have to be more reggae artists collaborating with um with uh these various different brands and um dispensaries. You know what I mean? Um mm-hmm. listen when I would do us a do a movie I know everybody here if it's Zach Mr. Flynn, everybody here can know as soon as a, 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 a movie is made and a man light a spliff, guess what you hear in the background? A reggae beat, right? Every time. So it's synonymous with with the music yeah. and Rastafari. Now, so, now, Junior, Junior Kelly, yeah. I want to cut in here a little bit. Uh, I want to cut in a bit uh, on, on what you have mentioned earlier on because you did say reggae music. And some people may say, well, you know, of course, of like, why just the reggae music? But then it's obvious because, as you said, it's synonymous with the music. However, you also mentioned not just you. It doesn't have to be you. And, no. I, and, and I understand that you no longer, I don't know if you did before, but you no longer consume cannabis. Is that so? Not in the form that is mainly, um, that it is mainly consumed in, you know, which is building a spliff and smoking. No, I don't do that anymore. Been there, done that. Um, as an artist, I'm very energetic on stage, and I consume it in other ways. And I'm a strong advocate uh, of the consumption of it. You know, I, I consume it in other ways. I don't smoke it anymore. You know, but there's the cake, there's the punch, there's the biscuit, there's the sweetie. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, that, no, at the same time, no, the, you, you would have just blown the minds of, uh, of quite a few of your own fans uh, as yeah. well, you know what I mean? Because immediately some would say reggae music, Junior Kelly, you hear a song like Blaze, 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 Blaze. You know, you know what I mean? Give me the boom drum, strong drum. So what would have led you? What would have led you to the decision to, to if you want to put it, peg back a little bit? You know, you're no longer on the the front line with the split and the whatnot. What what got you to that decision that you made to need to take that turn? I want to tell you, uh, when you mentioned frontline, there's so much um, um, rasters and even artists that you will never see them in a split with a spliff in public. It's not that they're ashamed of it. You know, Most smoke privately. And I was like that, you know, but 
Um, I know it shocked a lot of people, but let me evolve from that stage. I, I, I have so many options now, more than just lighting up a spliff, you know, I'm yeah. way past that. Because I'd love to jump in on that. Itself, as, as a, as a <laughs> consumer uh, of, the, of the product, this wonderful green board. Um, but ask yourself, I ask myself the question, and anybody in my line of work should ask himself, who, who consume a cannabis should ask himself this question. My question to myself around 20 years ago is, um, do you smoke it for the high? And if is yes, is there other ways to extract that eye without burning it? Yeah. And the answer is yes, there's many ways. So I transition from burning it and move on to, I think, a better way of consuming it for myself, my opinion. Yeah, yeah. No, I have a, I have a lot of love to ask you, and I would like to bring in Zach, because Zach wanted to add a piece on this. Yes, Zach? I, I'm actually just, uh, I love to hear what I'm hearing. Respect, Junior. You know, like, to, I was very intrigued when we had the artists here last weekend welcoming them into the dispensary and hearing about how they use cannabis in their daily life. And I was shocked. CBD was the main request, um, you yeah. know, with no psychoactive high. And you're very true. I mean, THC is really just helping with serotonin production for mood That's changing. All it, that's all it does. And you can get that elsewhere. And then, you know, this draws back to that point you were making earlier to have more of an involvement as an artist and an advocate for an alternative way of cannabis use and an alternative lifestyle. Now that we have this open conversation, now that we have open access to all these different products, yes. preaching that through your song, through your music, through your artistry is some way that you could collaborate and really stand out very uniquely with these brands that are now producing edibles, CBD uh, dominant strains or products, you know, non-psychoactive elements or non-psychoactive uses of cannabis. Consuming raw THC is amazing when you have when you're fighting cancer tumors. It's the best way oh, yes. to oh, yes. uh, fight tumor growth, THCA. I mean, it's not medically proven yet, but a lot of studies have been looking into that. And these sort of things we don't hear in song. It's all just light your big stuff and and you know. And I, 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 really, I, really, I really like the exactly. way you, I really like the way you put in that point there, Zach, because that is the last point I would like to go to Junior one more before we take the commercial break. And when we come back after the break, actually we're gonna do another song. We're gonna do boom draw, actually. <laughs> and when we come back from that, we're gonna continue with uh Levon. But what I wanted to find out is is, is, is just that. Rastafari, I'm a young man, I'm in my thirties and I'm in our upper thirties, so I have been listening to reggae music my entire life. And I know every every song comes with Roll a spliff, take a draw, and so on. <laughs> so in essence, similar to some of the, 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 the things we would have heard as children, as in eating hot dogs was good as a child, but then as an adult, eating hot dogs gets you cancer. But then Rastafari is saying our entire lives, roll a big spliff. But then Junior Kelly says now, oh, I just eat edibles. Or I just like, wait a minute. <laughs> so it's all been time. Is, is, that, is there going to be a change in your tone? Or would you say there's a change in tone that we can expect from, from our reggae artists in terms of what they put into the music. So can I hear Junior Kelly saying, I rise up this morning and I, and I bite into a brown knee. That's a very good idea. Um, uh, that's a very good idea. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm glad you mentioned, uh, you bring up the, 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 um, the, the, um, the topic uh, yeah. about consummation of it apart from smoking it. Yeah. Other people, why they stay away from it is that they they're not educated on it. They would love to try it. A lot of people can't even sleep at night because they have so many stress on their head. It's a really good stress reliever. Zach, I, I, I'm sure Zach can testify to that. You know what I mean? It, it has so many good use to relax relax your mind and keep your focus on on your task. Um, personally, when I consume it. If I have a task, I go all day until it's done. Yeah. You understand? Productivity and is up. Yes, yes. It, 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 it keep me focused on, on the task at hand. You know what I mean? And so a lot of people would stay away from it because they do not want to smoke it. But they are not educated like Zach and myself, you and Mr. Flynn, know that there's many different ways to consume it many different ways without smoking it so they're not introduced to it they, they love weed them love cannabis mm. they're advocates of cannabis use but are not open to to the cake and the punch and 
the sweetie and the biscuits and the brownies. You know what I mean? And so, you're right. I may have to do a few songs <laughs> <laughs> and introduce these new products from the same cannabis. You know what I mean? It's, right. it's a good idea. Thank you very much. And before we take our pause, let me just call in uh, Laverne. Levon Flynn, sorry, once again to give us a little bit of synopsis as to what you just heard there coming out of both Zach and Junior Kelly from the consumption <laughs> side of things before we take our pause. How do you feel about what you heard? Yeah, yeah, man. I love the conversation. I love the direction it took a while ago because, you know, I've had my, I've been at that stage as well. Where, where are we? Do I want to smoke the weed should I need to find should I find another way should I try some edibles should I try the vaporizers I have about four or five vaporizers in my house I have about been through about four or five steam chalice (laughs) you know but there's just something there's just something about a spliff where the experience is it's more intimate it's more personal is a is almost a is almost a a, a relationship between you and your spliff in terms of the experience as a smoker. So, smoking will always be <laughs> yeah, yeah. special I mean, for more people and more accessible. Yes, you're right. So, let's take yeah. a minute right there, guys. What I'm going to do, we're going to drop a big tune, a boom draw tune. You know, we're going <laughs> to drop a big tune here, a boom draw tune. We're going to send it straight back to Junior Kelly again, the edibles champ at this moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm so, watch me, Junior Kelly. We actually had a big reggae concert over the weekend here on Saturday. We had Buju Banton, Luciano, Anthony B, Black Loyalty from Trinidad and Tobago, and we also yeah. had Barry yeah. Salmon here live. I, I was the, actually the one of the hosts for the program. We presented them with appreciation awards on the night as well too. So trust me, our reggae okay. movement in TNT is huge at their tuning in, and I am certain you have a few fans this evening. Oh, oh yes, I have, with you. I have a whole lot. <laughs> no, no, what I mean is, you have a few fans whose minds have been blown yeah. tonight hearing that Junior Kelly says, What? He only has the edibles and he has the what? You know what I mean? So I am certain yeah. we have a few guys yeah, in here. So what are we going to do? We're going to take some calls. Hey, hey, tr- 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 trust me, they're, they're not going to be that surprised, man. The, 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 the persons are, the, the public education is getting a lot better. Yeah. in terms of the different exactly. ways to consume. Exactly. I'm not, exactly. not going to be as surprised as you think. <laughs> well, you yeah. know what? We're going, to, we're going to take in this track, and when we come back, I think we're going to try and open our phone lines as well. I'm sure we're going to have some callers that would like to um, get in and say a few words. It's 624, uh, 624-1005, or you can call 623-5001. Those are our digits to get in. If you're calling internationally, of course, it's 1-868-624-1005 or one 668 Five zero zero one. We have a nice cast on the inside. It's a regional show this evening. Here's another big one from the legend. That's what I said. The legend, Junior Kelly. <laughs> as we continue with our program Heights Boy now this is a real iconic conversation I never thought um, I would have been in a conversation with Junior Kelly and others like this it's always our second season of the program I really enjoy the program because we've had the opportunity to speak with quite a few leaders in the industry I'm not just talking about in music but when we're talking about cannabis different players alright and I know for a fact somewhere in somewhere in my journey I I I you know what I mean? Light up a big one to Junior Kelly in this life at some point. Let's not get into that here now, but that is just the case. So we thank Zach for being here, Levon and Junior Kelly. And as I mentioned before, we have one of the artists that was actually a part of the reggae show on the weekend, Redemption A, the guy who actually opened the show for us representing TNT to the world, Black Loyalty. Welcome to the program, Black Loyalty. It's a blessing, Sonny Bling. Greetings. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you on the program with us this evening as well, too. Um, Junior Kelly is actually live on the Zoom with us here right now. Greetings, Junior Kelly, man. Greetings, greetings, Black Loyalty. My legendary artist. That Your legendary man. artist, huh? Yes, sir. Did you know? Yes, and, 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 <laughs> now, now, Junior Kelly, he was not in studio when we had this part of the conversation. I'm going to ask him now. I'm going to blow his mind. I'm going to show you how true this thing is. Mm-hmm. Do you know, or did you know, mm-hmm. that Junior Kelly does not burn cannabis spliff wise and thing? And you know that? Okay, okay. You, no, did, no, did you, did you know that? One I, 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 I didn't know that. You know what? Anymore. 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 Black loyalty is a big, big dread as well too in the studio, right? And I am saying to you, Black loyalty, did you know 
that your artist Junior Kelly mm -hmm. does not burn a spliff anymore. No, he takes he takes edibles, etc. Edibles. Well, but I, I didn't did you know, know that? that? I didn't know that at all. Isn't that a shocking thing to you? Mistake. No, it's not shocking to me because with my understanding of marijuana through the years, I gained to understand because I would, I would have had the privilege of meeting with gurus from Himalayas, right. the temple. Right. You know, because I used to study with a certain order called Hare Krishna, which is Sanskrit. So right. I used to meet with people of different walks of life during that period of my life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people out there don't consume marijuana in the sense of smoking. You know, some people also use it as burning rituals, right? right. They would make circles and they smoke and chant the mantras and they receive their heights. And marijuana also acts as a psychedelic in some instances. Sacrament. It's a sacrament. Thank you, my brother, for better word, you know what I mean? So, we have the concept of rolling marijuana, smoking marijuana, which, you know, we introduced that to the world. Right. Roll on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of people have never done that. Like, when I went to Jamaica years ago, I've never seen a mountain roll on. Yeah, on the Bobby. You know if I see a mountain roll on, I would be like, yeah, he's been to Trinidad. He's been to the Caribbean. He's been to the Caribbean, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so, marijuana also have been ingested through a lot of medicinal ways. You know what I mean? Via boiling. You know what I mean? It have people that use these stems to make merchandise yeah. which you know the Japanese high in that you yeah. know what I mean so a lot of people think marijuana is a big smoke out thing this is not a smoke out thing yeah. you know what I mean and I don't agree with anything giving anybody cancer you know what I mean you need to know your, ge your genetic memory bank you know what I mean you need to know your family tree yeah. you know what I mean to know what you need to ingest and what you not to ingest because not everything is for everybody right. that's why in the ancient tradition they would call it, they would call it taboos yeah. You know what I mean? So if you don't know your taboo, if you have not done a name in a center, I was a child, you don't know certain things you shouldn't consume, then probably you might use marijuana, it might affect you mentally, yeah. it might affect you spiritually, it might affect you emotionally, it might interfere with your mental or your psyche. You know, because not everybody should smoke marijuana. Some people could drink it. Like all the brother would have recognized that he crossed each stage of smoking it, now he could eat it. Yeah. And he would reach the same heights in the same way, getting the same results. Because I spoke with Malanash some years ago and he, was, he had this thing called body high. Yeah, you know some um, edibles as well. Okay, man, that's a good friend. And he said, "Boy, that is gay body high." I, I body high. Yeah, you need high. I know when they smoke my own eyes, head high. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So all these things, I get to recognize that. Marijuana have many different properties. Big respect to the brother Marlon Ash as well. Pretty good yeah. friend. He actually just wrapped up a little tour in Japan yes, alongside yes, yes, Sisla Kalonji. I saw that. Um, like I talked about a matter of days ago. These guys are just moving all over the place. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. big respect to them all the same. And and black loyalty, quickly before we are, uh, we want to bring back in uh Levon Flynn mm -hmm. on the conversation. We have a lot of players in this conversation Serious. right now this evening. Serious. We have uh we have Zach out of, of Gro and Tegan Babuda. Big respect, big you know respect I mean? to we all we the people that log on right regular now. Local and abroad. Much, uh, we can go into things here yes, right sir. now, but I want to ask yes, you quickly sir. before we continue, how was Redemption 8 for you? Um, we were the co-host for the program, Ken Simmons mm -hmm, and myself. Mm -hmm. We were there. I saw that. It was my first time to see you on that big stage in front of over 20,000 people. How so was true. that for you? Well, you know, it shows time and space does the magic. Yeah. It's all about being persistent and consistent. Otto Carrington is a brother too, but I've mentored me a lot. Mm. He knew me from small coming into the business and he would have guided me and said loyalty there are different approaches you need to take and whatever so me being on that stage was just confirmation that here we're going on the world is ready for me now and it's time to take it from one stage to another you mm. know what i mean so it was confirmation that here we're going on loyalty the time is now and also, let's go see you brought mama on the stage of course that's my queen mm -hmm. yeah that's, the, that's my foundation so i can't leave out in that opportunity that angle of good plus mothers there around the corner so yeah, yeah, yeah. people were shocked you know i mean they didn't recognize that i had up my sleeve now Correct. and I, I realized a lot of people didn't heard that i saw that i say happy birthday to david Rada, david Rada as well Oh, I didn't I know why that. people missed that. Yeah, we missed that. Miss David, but I birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I, yeah. and, I, and I said it loud. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel like they missed that. They, they didn't understand. That. And you know, we need to take note of these things because a lot of artists will go on stage most times and they don't remember the icons. All right, thanks so much for being yeah. here. Now, Zach, I'm um, not Zach actually. Sorry about that. I actually want to turn back over to Levon. Joshua Simongal. Yeah, Joshua. So, Joshua. Now, before, no. before, you, before, you, before you go. Quickly. Loyalty. Yes, brother. Before you go. Yes, Kate. You know, say. What did you say earlier? You bring your mother on stage? Yes, my lord. Yeah, for the redemption. All right, right. watch this now. You bring on mama earth on stage. Most men are bring on them girlfriend on stage. Uh, so enough respect to you. <laughs> give respect, my lord. Yeah, Big enough respect. respect to you. Enough of course, respect. Mother is creation. <laughs> yeah. You can't. Yeah, as respect. much as you love your wife, you need to know mama is mama. <laughs> and you, 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 know? if you don't appreciate mama and love mama, you're not going to love your wife the way you're supposed to. Facts. 
All right, yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah, get Lavon. Lavon, I know you've been um, you've been around patiently. You've been listening to some of this information here, and you 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 now advocating a big way. So you taking some notes this this evening with us here, Lavon. Let's hear um, again from our friend uh, Joshua. Talk to us. Yes, Mr. Flynn. I, I wanted to ask this question. I know that there's, there's so many competing interests in the Caribbean um, cannabis in terms of culture, the industry. We have the Rastafari perspective, that is such a pure connection to cannabis, the spiritual, out of, out of this world in a sense. And then there's the, the business perspective, and the business sees this industry as a, as a potential to, to, to reinvoke the economy. Do you think it's a, a reasonable expectation that all these interests could be balanced for the sake of the Caribbean? Is it possible to balance all these interests and maintain a, a level of equity that everyone can benefit? Or is that, do you think that's an unrealistic expectation given the experience you have? at the Medicinal Cannabis Licensing Authority of Jamaica? Yeah, well, my response is not in reference to my time as, as CLA chairman. And my short answer is yes, it is achievable. But it is going to require remarkable forward thinking. It's going to be require a lot of interdependence. Um and it's going to require really, really visionary thinking and looking at, at what we have. I'm speaking specifically, of course, from a, from a Jamaican perspective right now. Um, so, so, so yes, it, 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 is, it is achievable. And even if you look across the, the, other, the Caribbean as well, um, it's possible. D- D- Dominic, uh, I believe, is somewhere in the process of of setting up their legislation. We have other Caribbean islands, Antigua, St. Vincent, um, St. Lucia. Each Caribbean island has something to offer. You know, each each Caribbean island has the, like when we, I was in Dominica last year and I was speaking to someone in the government and saying, listen, you have these famous, what is it, the, 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 the hot springs. Um, they have a section in, in Dominica where they just go up in the hills and they just have all these hot springs. You can pair that with a cannabis experience and create your own niche wellness wellness tourism right there. And that would be unique oh. to Dominica. Yeah, um, and Jamaica, of course, as I mentioned earlier, they, they can do their own uh, you know, so wellness tourism. But each Caribbean island, I believe, has something to offer. It's just going to require, you know, just visionary thinking and good implementation. I definitely, Mr. Flynn, is a pleasure uh, to have you on Heights again for season two. And uh, just as we, we, we wrap here with you, uh, Mr. Flynn, we just want our listeners to know that, you know, you can get uh, uh, Mr. Flynn's uh, do- three-part documentary on the cannabis industry in Jamaica um, that on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook. It should be ready by tomorrow, so you will get a deep insight and see what uh, the former chairman of the Jamaica Cannabis Licen- Licensing Authority has done in, in Jamaica. It's a definitely a pleasure to have you on this episode of Heights. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Thank Blessings. you so much for being a part of the program. Junior, Zach. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him, Mr. Flynn. Nice, man. Keep up the good work. Nice to meet you. Bless him. Keep up the good work. All right, brother. So what we're going to do, of course, let's take in a little snippet of some music. I know it's all about the music because we have artists on the inside as well. We heard some Junior Kelly before. And Junior Kelly, it's your time to take in a little bit of Black Loyalty. Here's a track called Life. Still in studio with us. Zach is also in studio with us from Grow Antigua and Bobuda and Reggae, lo- Reggae Loyalty Royalty. The whole nine, I was going to say black loyalty, I say loyalty, you know, but Reggae Royalty is also in studio with us this evening. Junior Kelly is in the building. Thank you so much for joining us. But right now, though, as I said, we're getting ready to go into our Grow Guru segment. Derek, talk to us. But today on the show, our Grow Guru segment um, is basically we want to focus on nutrients for, um, for growing. Right. So, I mean, the great debate since... I mean, we had had the criminalization and um, person sat to grow is organic versus synthetic nutrients. That is the age-old argument. Yeah, it's which is better. I mean, grow. everybody, I mean, depending on your choice in nutrients along the line, um, you know, would tend to have their own opinion on, on which is better. I mean, according to a friend, a mutual friend of ours, there's 600 different type of nutrients out there. Choose one. <laughs> Um, Mark, in your experience, what was the difference with organic versus synthetic? Um, obviously, big differences. Eh? They both have their pros and cons, as I'm sure you are aware. Um, 
Synthetics and stuff is great for weight, commercial production, consistency, sterility, them kind of things. Organics, however, you seem to get a flavor profile that you can't achieve with anything synthetic, in my opinion. Come pretty close with some good synthetic notes, you know, we, we both use quite a bit of stuff already, but nothing seems to really, really hit the taste buds like, like a proper organic group. So even if even if you you know you yeah okay so tell us the different types of, of, of nutrients. I mean I mean in in terms of organics, there are liquid nutrients that, that yes. you could buy, and then there are, there are soil additives that you could add to the soil and just water in pure water. I think that that like for, for instance like um our, one of our sponsors um twelve twelve grow shop they have Gaia Green which Gaya is very Green. popular in Trinidad. Yes, they sell YouTube popular. videos. But tell us a little it, bit more about the difference. It's so easy to use. That is one of the biggest things. It's basically just add water. Um all those different organic nutrients that you're speaking of there they basically do the same thing eh? they don't feed the plant they yeah. feed the soil exactly your soil biology feeds the plant in turn um really the only differences you would have with liquids and dry powders and stuff is the breakdown time the strength obviously depending on what you're using because i found i mean in, in, in terms of my experience sometimes with the chemical nutrients you have to address a deficiency within the plant because you quickly. can do it right away yeah. um whereas you know with, with the organics it takes a while for, for, for the, the microbiology to break down the nutrients and in, in order to feed the plant so it, you know it, if no, you have to address something now it, it, it's quite difficult the nutrients are there they have their properties but with soil biology you have a lot going on in the pot you know and like we mm -hmm. said that that soil is feeding okay so last week plant. um some of our guests well um from the old mansions from old mansions and bungaroo mm -hmm. were saying that you know for sacramental use you can't use any animal feces like manure what we know as right. manure i mean in terms of i mean a lot of our growers out there would think that you know okay i have some soil in my yard there I, I, you know a mixing a manure and a chick, i'm sticking a, a seedling you know i mean right Will you, will you say that's advisable for the cannabis plant? Because in my experience, cannabis is very sensitive. You would think that, you know, it's, it, everybody says it's a weed, but it tends to respond quite quickly to environmental yeah. stimulus. It, it, it's, it's really hard to undo some of that stimuli sometimes. Um, my thing is, no, I don't, I don't really like that... Like how you explained it, they stick it in a pot with some manual and stuff like that. No, I mean, I mean, we, 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 I mean, that's what generally thinking right, what right. or or, or persons who might not have any experience but like cannabis say, or do a, any research. It think. is a little more to it than that. Um, you have to use the right proportions. You have to use the right things. You have to aerate the soil properly. It has to be draining properly. All those things to maintain that environment within the pot. When you're growing organics, that pot is very, very important. You have a lot going on inside there. Um, that whole root zone. What yeah. some may know as the rhizosphere. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of biology that holds it together. The same biology that holds the entire earth together. We basically try to slip it down. Well, what? You know, and maintain that environment in there. That's not as easy to do as as just add water. You could get away with a lot of things like, you know, Gaia Green, things like that. But um, those are just made to simplify things mm -hmm. for, for home growers, you know. They, they take a lot of the guesswork out of it. Once you mix your soil properly and you follow the instructions, you're going to do pretty good. All right, folks. So we're inside a segment right now brought to you with the kind compliments of 1212 Grow Company. If you want to grow high-quality plants, check out 1212 Grow Company. All right, at 103 St. Vincent Street in Port of Spain. Now, 1212 has grow tents, lights, AC Infinity fans, Athena, Fox Farm, Gaia Green, Mars Hydro, General Hydroponic Soils, and advanced nutrients 1212 is open from mondays to fridays between 10 30 a.m to 5 30 p.m on saturdays from 10 30 a.m to 2 p.m you can give them a call as well at 267 6600 and of course today we give you our, our listeners a chance to win uh, a humboldt nutrients three part basic starter kit that is worth over 850 dollars courtesy of 1212 grow company 6241 after our discussion this evening we're going to give you a chance to answer a couple quick questions and win that said junior kelly is smiling from ear to ear with that starter kit i don't know if you know i need to send him one over there in jamaica he's nodding away at that humble nutrient i think he's looking for one of those so guys let's continue with our conversation yes, Let me so, i mean in terms of our price that, that that's a chemical based nu nutrient salts right. as, as what, what people might, right. might 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 know it as um in my experience though i mean i prefer it because of the yields the quick response time the ease of mixing i mean uh, orga with organics is a, is a lot of knowledge trial and error experience in terms and of waiting. Mix and, and waiting, waiting. <laughs> you know <laughs> so um you, what, 
it, what, what are some of the considerations be, beyond that in terms of if you, if you want to use like syn- synthetic n- n- nutrients? I mean, for me, flushing is essential. Um, flushing is whereby before you harvest the plant, you flush the, the, the growing medium, whether it's a pot, um, well, especially a pot, because if you're in the ground, it's going to be quite difficult, um, with, wa- with a large amount of water in order to bring down the concentration of salts to, right. to almost zero to, to the level of water. Um, you know, I find that, you know, you got cleaner smoke. Some people, but but you know, in the same breath, that some people, some people you, you don't do. flush, and they, they. If you do it properly, you really will have a much cleaner smoke, and it goes back to where we have the control when we're using synthetics. You know, you measure what's going in, you can measure what's coming out, you can dial in exactly how much your plant is feeding. You're not overloading your medium. You know, you have total control when you do it synthetics. Everything down to the pH. Um, that's very very crucial. And text me to our, our listeners who might not understand what pH is. pH is the acidity or alkalinity of of, of anything. So lower pH um, is a scale of one to, zero to fourteen. The lower numbers are more acidic, higher numbers more alkaline. Uh, marijuana generally likes around six. Slightly I would say. acidic. Slightly, Slightly more on the acidic, acidic side. side. Um, it may depend on your medium. Last week we spoke about cocoa peat versus. Um, Peat moss, um, with the cocoa peat, they like, you know, the plants in grown in cocoa peat like slightly, a little more acidic. Right. Five point, we could probably push 5.5. Without getting too deep into things like cash and exchange and stuff like that, each medium will have its own properties. You have, you know, you, you have preset specs for everything that, mm-hmm. that you can start off with to run. Um, every plant is going to be different. Every growing environment is going to be different, obviously. But you start at those base numbers and you pretty much adjust to what you're growing. The adjustment period, it, it pretty much comes with experience, a careful eye, lots of research, and, and trial and error, like you said. Mm-hmm. The good thing with synthetics is that trial and error is a lot more forgiving. Like I said, you could flush out your pot, reset. And start all over again. With that, organics is not always that. No, correct, because you have to be, to be broken down. Yeah. 6241 as we're inside this segment with the kind compliments of 1212 Grow Shop that you can visit at 103C St. Vincent Street in Port of Spain. You can give them a call at 267 6600 Give us a call right now. Let's find out from you guys how much you have been paying attention to Heights, the program, so you can win this kit. All courtesy of the 1212 Grow Shop right here on Slam 105 as we wait on those calls. Derek. Yeah, so, um, you know, as a first-time grower, I mean, with, with, me, with me and my friends anyway, I mean, we went to Team 1212, check Derek, Derek. I mean, any of the Grow Shops, I mean, 1212 is our sponsor, so you know, we support them fully. Um, Check them out on San Vincent Street. But, you know, it's a little daunting sometimes. You see all these brands, Fox Farms by General Hydroponics. Ten I mean, thousands hum- of brands, Humboldt. You know? I mean, you know, it, it's daunting. But in my experience, I'm sure your experience too as well, Mark. I mean, they all pretty much do the same things. There's a lot of branded involved they along the way. Involved. Some of them have their, their, their specialty products that, you know, work for different things for different people but but yes they're basically all the same same principle yeah so i mean for for those who might be you know be a little bit daunted i mean our advice uh, our advice is to visit one of these shops one one of these group shops like 1212 um talk talk to talk to the people there you know talk um, to them derek is very knowledgeable very very helpful i I mean we've been knowing derek since you know since decriminalization i mean he's he's one of the first group shops to really really have variety and things we could choose from and the knowledge to tell us you know this is this that is that yeah, and, and and trying is important. I mean, it it, it, it you, don't, you don't need to have to, the largest budget. I've seen persons produce um produce high quality super, but on a very low on budget. a very low budget. So I mean, you know, that's because the big brand, the, the box set is two thousand so dollars. No, that I, I mean, you I, can still do well with something that is much cheaper. But I mean, you know, the key is to do your own research as well. Also, too. you can listen listen out to our Google segment for, for tips along the way. Please um, send us questions. Call us to interact with us um, to ask your questions, but generally, you have to give it a try. You have to, and you will find along the way what suits you, what suits your budget, you know, what what your ex- your expectations is. Because I mean, some person might just be trying it for the first time, as opposed to somebody who you know wants to maximize their four plants to get the most out of, of, out of it, so they could share with friends, or you know, they could have a supply, so they won't have to purchase in the black market, which still exists as it is right now. All right, so we're inside the 1212 Grow Guru segment with Derek Chong and Mark Sebrand. They're giving us some serious knowledge on the inside here right now. As far well, as I said before, Junior Kelly nodding his head all the way through. Put a couple thumbs up in there when you heard a couple points. It's like that. So that told me that you guys were on the right track. 
Because you know when you are Junior Kelly and the thing, you know what I mean? As I say, we play boom, draw and things earlier on. Yeah? So this man had to know what he's singing. So he's been here, Black Loyalty, you're also inside with us. Huh? How do you feel about some of the stuff you would have heard here this evening from the guys in the segment? I mean, really, re- really interesting. Very edifying conversation for those, the consumers who think marijuana is just about smoking. You know, but hearing these guys speak, you know, automatically I'm a bro thinker. I was thinking so that why you don't make this a subject in school? And have these men as teachers, you know, for the for the youths and them who probably reach of age, they're using it regardless. Yeah. You know, rather than have them using it out of perspective with the right guidance, yeah. show them that you know. Because they can't stop it. Yeah. Yeah, we live in the real world. Yeah. A lot of secondaries using marijuana. Mm. Right? But they don't have knowledge of it. They don't know what it consists of. And probably they may be interested in growing it. You know, because what I seen as a future of farms in Trinidad and Tobago, I seen it going there bit by bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? The uh, youths and them now gonna have a place to work who are unemployed and this mm-hmm. they, they might be less inclined to grow pumpkin you know, and tomatoes <laughs> in the hot sun, but yeah. because they have this uh, inherent love uh, of, of cannabis, for you, it, you know, yeah. they might be more willing to, 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 to try that. I agree, I agree. Exactly. I agree totally. So so make it a subject in school. You know that you will understand there's a plant like other plants. Well, Derek and Mark, you'll have some work to do. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, so this is teacher Derek? No, this is your Derek and this is uh, teacher Mark. Teacher Mark. <laughs> Zach and Junior Kelly, let me get a couple of words from you guys yes, quickly sir. because we're getting ready to wrap up program in a few minutes. And, uh, teacher Derek and teacher Mark, I love it. <laughs> yeah, teacher Derek and teacher Mark. Junior Kelly, what is your take on some of what you just heard there? They, they spoke about synthetics and these things, and uh, I don't know how you feel about that on organics. Talk yeah, about. well, synthetic, um, um, be, 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 it made some serious point. I don't know if it's Mark or Derek, but um, when it comes on to um, consuming the synthetic, it 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 is not it it more scalable, but and than you know organically grown um, cannabis. It's scalable in terms you can measure the amount. It, 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 the, the approach is a little bit more, way more scientific, and you will get. And if you follow the, the, the procedures, you can get the exact result. They have it done to a science, basically. Farming is science, really. You no know, people don't put it in that bracket, but I think it farming is. on a whole is science. So back to the, the um, back to the point: organic or synthetic. Um, synthetic lose out when it comes down to flavor organic and i think it was teacher mark who said that teacher mark. Uh, that that the organic uh, have more flavor yeah and, and you get more variety in flavor than synthetic synthetic has its place as we say it's more it's it's it, it's you can eat more you, you can measure it more you understand and 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 a one and one make two when it comes down to synthetic. It's easier to, and as you say, it's more forgiving. You know, it's more forgiving when you come on to the growing aspect of it. Uh, you get a certain result every time. Yeah. If you if if if, if, the, if the organic is not in precise environment, and it take more care, you know what I mean. And so you would get the result, but it. it it's one of them beautiful women, if we use this metaphor. It's one of them beautiful women that, that needs more maintenance. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd love to throw my perspective in there because he. Yeah, exactly. Yes, please. Actually, we, actually Can have, um, we have a question for yeah. you too as well. We, we, yes. I, we I, actually uh, tend to grow only with OMRI certified products here at our farm. I mean, I used to sell all the stuff that you guys sell at 1212. Shout out to what you guys have done. I think you used to follow my page, We Dadly, when I was running We Dadly for a bit, and I followed you guys back. Big up to 1212. Um, yeah, big up to 1212 for sure. It's a great place to go and learn about the different products and, and learn about how they produce different types of cannabis. Um, but on our farm, we put our customers in our products first. Um, so we try to stick to OMRI certified only. It is much harder to scale. It's uh, less forgiving in some senses, but you'd be surprised it is it is more forgiving in others where you know dealing with microorganisms and living life uh they work depending on the environment you know life adapts so mm-hmm. you do see some forgivingness there 
But definitely, I think as we all determined, it comes to the flavor. That's one of the deciding factors. You see organic producing much better flavor, whiter smokes. You don't have issues where you run into flushing or nutrient lockout, which can be pretty hard for the home grower, even for the commercial growers on the farm. So I don't know. We stick organic. Organic. If it grows, stick, like stick, a, sound. stick up in there right there. Stick up in there real quick. Oh, one second. Uh, let's get a call. We got a call on the line. So let's see if we got that winner this evening on the on the program right now. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Yeah, man. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Are you ready to answer your question? How could it see twelve twelve grow shop? For sure. For sure. In season one, season one of Heights. We are in season two right now. Can you tell us two guests that appeared on season one of Heights for your over eight hundred and fifty dollars worth of of, of starter kit materials? Wow, well, um, Faris Al Rawi. Faris okay, Al Rawi, well. very good. That's one. Um, give me a second for the next one. Give me eh? a second for the next one, and there goes a second. Do you have the next one? Not at the moment. I'll no. give you a tip. He, he, he <laughs> no, appeared in the show. Tip. Two of them appeared in the show today. No, no tip. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he, he got it correct. He, he correct. said, Mister Sabu, to see that. Him too. My God, yeah. he's excited. Yeah, um, okay, good. So, here what you can do for me, please. Um, we're gonna take your information off air, right? Stay on the line. Let's take your information off air. Nice. Congratulations. He is a winner. All could have seen the 1212 Grow Shop, the I Grow Gurus. He just won himself over $850 worth of startup material, y'all. You can't go wrong. A humble nutrients three part. That's a nice kit. Basic that, that's a really nice kit. You ever kit. use any humble stuff? PPM's real low. It, it, N- really I, nice. I never use your humble, but I, I know about it. Humble yeah. County is a very popular yeah. county All in, in cannabis 12, um, production in California. Yeah. yeah, Humble County. Big up the Humble One County. One question to Zach, though. Yes. Zach, does it, does it not... Is it not more expensive to grow um, organically with the ORMI, ORMI um, with, with, um, products um, compared to if you was if you were to go the synthetic route? And you know how that would affect the consumer going forward. And to add to that question, you know what is your general rate? I mean, for indoor grown cannabis uh, by the gram in your company? Just as I, I mean, com- right now we're in a small dispensary located in St. John's. We're selling about twelve pounds a month. And we only have about 1,100 registered cannabis patients. Um, you know, that's consumption-wise. We are producing a lot more. I mean, our harvests are 30, 40,000 gram harvests at indoor a time. Indoor outdoor? Indoor outdoor? Combination. We have a few indoor rooms, and then we also have quite a few uh, sun t- tunnels, all sun-grown, but obviously shielded from the environment. Not with the polyurethane, because here in the Caribbean, especially in Antigua, it's way too hot to use polyurethane. So we do have to use a mesh to keep the airflow up. Um, But we try to protect the plants from the rain as much as possible. And we fight humidity a lot here, which is a really big uh, thing to navigate. We don't have any seasonal light. We're about 12 hours all year round. So vegging requires, you know, additional light pretty much all year. Um, And we're fighting temperature, pests, all this sort of stuff. You know, we've got so much neem trees growing here locally in Antigua, con- uh, concentrated in a small area that the neem products don't work because all the pests are immune mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I understand, I understand, mm. I understand. Well, you know what? I would want to so, thank you, um, Zach, for being a part of our program here this evening. You have brought anytime. so much to the show. And, of course, I think we're going to have you on a second time because it's just about 8 p.m., which means it brings us to the end of our formal show. We have Junior Kelly. We can't run away just yet. Black loyalty is here, so we can't run away just yet. Mm-hmm. So I think we're going to turn this into the Heights after party or something and get into <laughs> a little bit more of the artists. But Zach, we really, really want to thank you for, for, for being on the program. Thanks for the invite. As much as we said, we're going to be coming. Yes, and, yeah. and we're going to look forward Bless to that. Bless up, guys. Also, Girl Mark, Antigua welcomes everyone to Antigua. Junior Kelly, whenever you're ready to hit the stage here in Antigua, you got a big fan base. Well, I, come I, in here. I come in there soon, Zach. We'll link up. Nice, man. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Actually, I think what's going to happen, Zach, is Junior Kelly, the, the high team, we're all going to collaborate and maybe come at the same time and create something different, all right? That's going to be even yeah, better. Yeah. Black loyalty, yeah. I think, might have to be on that trip as well, too. Definitely, definitely. You know what, Mark? Good night, guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being on, Junior Kelly. You stick and stay. We're going to come back to you in a short, short, Mark. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. We're going to see you again come next yeah. Tuesday, of course. Look out for that Grow Guru segment. So this evening's topic with you guys was directly what again? Organics versus synthetics. Organics versus synthetics. Of course, Mark and Derek. Teacher, teacher Mark and teacher Derek. According to Junior <laughs> Kelly, they've just been dubbed that this evening. Thank you guys so much for being on the program. What I'm going to do, let me take in uh, Let me take in some of this planted right here. And we're going to come back with some more right here on Slam on Double O5. Keep it love. What well, you know?